Whether or not Taylor Swift will attend Sunday's NFL game is unknown at this time, but Swifties hope to catch a glimpse of the pop star on Sunday, December 17, in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Once again, Swifties want to know, should they watch this week's Kansas City Chiefs game? Let's take a closer look at whether Taylor Swift will be at the Chiefs-Patriots game to cheer on Travis Kelsey on Sunday, December 17. This week, the Chiefs face the New England Patriots in an away game. The game starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Time in Foxborough, Massachusetts considering Swift spent her 34th birthday in New York City, and her private jet didn't fly anywhere because it seems like New York is where the pop star is at the top of her game. So will Swift be at the Chiefs-Patriots game? It's hard to say for sure until she shows up, or not, since she hasn't publicly shared her intentions. But with the era's tour currently on hiatus, Swift will likely be on hand to support Kelsey. Swift has now attended six Chiefs games since September as her romance with Kelsey continues to reach new heights, nearly seven months after Taylor Swift took to Gillette Stadium for her era's tour, the singer may be on her way back, Swift even has a house near a Rhode Island beach. The 33-year-old singer bought the colonial-style mansion, called High Watch, on five acres in Watch Hill for nearly $18 million in 2013. The spot has since become famous for its her annual 4th of July party is attended by many celebrities. Swift's most recent visit to Gillette Stadium had a strong turnout. The era's tour took over the stadium for three nights, with a notable performance in the pouring rain during the Saturday show. The megastar has given the Chiefs and the NFL a huge boost since she started dating Kelsey and attended a game in September. The so called Swift effect has been shown to increase NFL viewership, ticket sales, and merchandise sales. According to news site Storyful, the Chiefs Jets match she attended on October 1 became the most watched match since the last Super Bowl. According to sports apparel retailer Fanatics, sales of Kelsey's jersey also spiked nearly 400% after Swift's first appearance at a Chiefs game. Swift has added several awards to her lengthy repertoire in recent weeks. Just last week, she was named Times Person of the Year, the first woman to receive the honor twice and the first person to receive the award for their success as an award-winning artist. Mind. She was most recently named Person of the Year, identified by Time as the person who has done the most to influence the year's events for better or worse, in 2017, the era's tour also became the first tour to gross more than $1 billion, according to Polestar calculations released last week, and is expected to reach $2 billion next year. Spotify and Apple Music data released in late November also confirmed the pop star as the top global streaming artist in 2023. When Taylor Swift was named Time's Person of the Year, a lot of people noticed a two-sentence quote in her interview, here's no point in actively trying to, quote-unquote, defeat your enemies. Trash takes itself out every single time, it got my attention, for sure, I thought it was one of the most emotionally intelligent things I'd ever heard, but, there's also another quote in that same article that might have a much deeper and longer-lasting effect on Swift, the music industry, and frankly business in general even your business. It's this one, major labels have since made it more difficult for artists to re-record their music, if you have any familiarity at all with Swift. You can probably guess what this is about. The line comes as Swift describes how she decided to record and issue new versions of all of her old music, after Scooter Braun, whom Swift considers an enemy, wound up controlling the rights to her original masters, I'd run into Kelly Clarkson and she would go, just redo it, Swift says in the article. In fact, Clarkson actually posted the notion on Twitter in 2019. My dad kept saying it to me too. I'd look at them and go, how can I possibly do that? The result was Swift's release of, Taylor's version, editions of her first six albums, as time recounted, and of course others had long reported, the fact that Swift wrote the songs herself meant she retained the musical composition copyright and was within her rights to do so. The re-recordings are all part and parcel of Swift's continuing success, also including her reported $1 billion era's tour, and the related concert movie, which has grossed over $250 million as of this writing, but, it also represents a big potential problem for record labels, as the sentence I singled out above suggests.
Because while almost everyone is impressed by how Swift handled the situation and turned lemons into billion-dollar lemonade, her achievements here appended part of the music industry. As Billboard reported earlier this year, major labels including Universal Music Group, Sony Music Entertainment and Warner Music Group have since changed the terms they offer for new musicians' contracts in response Swift strategy, in order to try to prevent other new artists from doing their own versions of Taylor's version. Music labels arguably take a portfolio approach. Much like early stage business investors or the backers of other creative and artistic pursuits, betting that the outsized returns on a few big successes will outweigh the low or even negative returns on many other investments. So, in some cases, the labels are now reportedly demanding new artists agree to wait an unprecedented 10, 15 or even 30 years, after leaving their record companies before they can re-record any music. That's a big change from what Billboard says was in a Swift-era contract, delaying any re-records to either 5 to 7 years from the release date of the original or 2 years after a label's contract required. In fairness, institutions change their preferred terms all the time and it's up to future parties, and their attorneys, to decide whether to acquiesce or be prepared to walk away, it's true in many different businesses, and maybe in yours as well. I suppose how you feel about this change depends on where you sit, Swifties and fans of other new musicians might look at these new terms, which artists' lawyers are fighting against, as you might imagine, as an evil move designed to stifle younger artists defenders of the music industry or other portfolio businesses, might conclude it's a stroke of genius since the the idea that an artist could just re-record their old work undercuts the value of the old masters that comprise part of the label's portfolio. So, think about your own business and decide for yourself, are you like Swift, looking for loopholes to exploit and to find opportunities most people would never dream of? Or are you like the labels, playing the long game, and trying to set the field to play the game over and over and over, either way, it's up to you to figure out what your version of success can look like. If you've ever wondered why Taylor Swift doesn't follow anyone on her social media platforms, fans have suggested Eminem might have played a role in shaping her approach to online presence. In a revealing moment, Eminem once shared a valuable piece of advice during an interview. When asked by Yeshu Dave why he doesn't follow anyone on Twitter, Eminem's response was clear, always be a leader, not a follower, Eminem responded, this philosophy underscores the idea that blindly following the crowd won't lead to personal or professional advancement. Swift could have taken this advice to heart, maintaining a similar stance on her social media accounts. Notably, she doesn't follow anyone. Including boyfriend Travis Kelsey, this stands in contrast to other celebrities like Beyonce, who, while having previously followed no one, now selectively follows her husband Jay-Z, explained her decision in the past, Swift's impressive social media following, with 278 million on Instagram and 94.9 million on Twitter, reflects her status as a leader in the entertainment industry. Back in 2019, Swift revealed to Capital FM Radio in the UK that the reason she doesn't follow anyone on Instagram is to avoid people making judgments about her life based on her likes or comments. I found a couple years ago that social media started to feel a bit like the media's way of monitoring my every move, Swift said. And like I started to realize that if I didn't wish one of my friends a happy birthday on Instagram, there would literally be articles saying, like, unsquatted. Taylor Swift is no longer friends with so and so and I'd literally be at the person's birthday party with them. And because I hadn't posted that I kind of reject this idea that if you didn't see it on the internet it didn't happen. So it was kind of my way of like not allowing my life to be controlled and monitored by social media. And I think we're all kind of taking steps to try to figure out how to not let it take over our lives and our feelings of validation, you can't have a memory and take a picture of it and spend the rest of the day looking at the comments for that one snapshot of your day, you should just maybe be present for your whole day.